Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to RPV City Talk. It's always an honor to have here in studio the mayor of our city, Mayor Jerry Dehovic. This is our first show, Jerry, of 2019 and you are mayor of the city for 2019. That's Congratulations. Well, how, thank you very much. How are you? How <laughs> you know, I'm awesome, Liz, but I, I do want to start off by saying uh, it's great to be back with you. It's been five years plus now, and we were just commenting off camera that I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, you know, things are great. Been on council uh, seven plus years now and uh, 10 more months and uh, looking forward to every minute of it. Oh, so. I know. Well, we appreciate all you do for the city because it's a, it's a lot of work, a lot of meetings and um, you're doing a lot of a lot of good things for the community. You were sworn in in December. You've already had a bunch of meetings already, running around the hill for us. And um, how how's it going? And and sort of what do you what do you want for 2019? What are some of your goals and expectations? Well, you know, I, my priorities haven't changed, Liz, since since I first ran on council. I think that uh, you know some are general and and very high level. Obviously, first is to keep the community safe public safety, uh, making sure our infrastructure is top notch. You know, we have the best roads in, in the state and, uh, um, you know, the best sewer systems now. Everything is great, so infrastructure is important. Uh, one of my biggest things, though, I think is working with this council. We've got a really, really good dedicated group. We've got two new council members, not so new now. They've mm -hmm. got a year under their belt. Um, but, but this council, we have three members left, and there possibly is a transition where you basically have a newly constituted council uh, with with two years or less experience in very short order in ten months and so in ten months, uh, but one of my goals is to make sure that there's continuity. We've done a lot of hard work and institutional knowledge is very important. So one of my big priorities and obviously continuing to work with residents. Uh, that's one of my favorite things in in dealing with the public and as mayor, uh, as one might imagine, you get more phone calls as the mayor. Um, but but solving residents small personal problems they may not be small they may be big but they're personal issues that affect their day-to-day -day lives that's that's where i really find uh, a lot of satisfaction because they are so appreciative when someone steps up and says wow you took care of that for me all right yeah. and i mean you were saying you know this is your second time as mayor you've been on the council for seven years i can imagine a lot has shifted since when you, you first started to where you are today wow <laughs> yes. yeah we had a we had a lot of storm drain issues we had san ramon was big in the early days um I think one of the things that I really focused on too was to bring a business-like manner and dealing with the council and dealing with the city. And I think uh, got a lot of compliments, not me personally, but as as a city and as a council about the professionalism and the demeanor and the decorum, uh, the way we handle things. I think we've come a long way, and I'm very proud of what we've done over the last seven years. A lot of things going on. Um, we could, you know, spend hours here. Um, some of the big, big issues coming up, like trying to figure out what to do about the Portuguese Ben landslide, discussing right. whether to build a big civic center in the community. Um, you have a list of city goals that you set up. We do. And uh, there's a long list of goals. And anyone could go on too, right, onto our website and take a look at what the goals Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Well, we have current website. goals. We're about to readdress those. Last time we addressed the goals was in 2014. Uh, I think we did a good job, and I've been... Uh, um, involved in trying to maintain at least the, the the high level categories of what we want you know public safety infrastructure and then the the, the subsets the actual true goals the tasks are what we're going to be working on at our next workshop okay so. the number one goal is always public safety number um, one and i saw you know that you want to hopefully reduce crime by 20 percent in 2019 so how are we going to do that i mean crime at least luckily has been going down well there are there are a whole host of things and that 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 starts with um the sheriff's department, number one, our, our staff, our city council, our residents, the businesses. Um, it also has very much to do with the various organizations, Neighborhood Watch. Uh, we've got a very robust outreach program, and it really has a lot to do with, with neighbors getting involved. You know, you think about we had ALPR cameras installed throughout the city. The next phase of that will be on the Western Avenue side, and, and I can get into details on that. I mean, there's a phase one and phase two. But very, very important. The there, you know, anyone who steals a car, you stand no chance in RPV. That's uh, you're going to get caught, and it's it happens all the time. Uh, we also have the um, uh, HOA camera program that that we are actually we live in the right. same neighborhood. We have this the Seaview HOA. We're the first one to get that, and it's 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 great because now we can we can technically catch on camera the comings and goings throughout the neighborhood and hopefully that will be a uh, 
a uh, deterrent to crime, but it will also help solve crimes if, in fact, they do happen. Um, one thing about what's happening with law enforcement in our community, the Lameda Sheriff Station's in transition. That's right. Captain Berenger has retired after 30-plus years with the Sheriff's Department. We loved him, and uh, you, as mayor, were able to... Uh, give him a nice send-off and uh, to give a tribute to him at the last council meeting that just Absolutely. took place. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that transition, like what does that mean when we might see a new captain and what you might also want to say about to, to remind the community about, about all that Dan was able to do for us. You know, we, we've been very lucky as a community starting when I first got on council uh, with Blaine Bolin and then moving on to Captain Berenger, I think, in early 2015. And, and people don't really realize that, that the success we've had from a policing aspect is, is a direct reflection of the leaders, uh, both Blaine and Captain Berenger. Um, people may not know, too, that the captain of the Lameda Sheriff's Department is, in fact, RPV's chief of police. It's, <laughs> it's, it's in our ordinance, so we call him chief sometimes, tongue-in-cheek. But uh, I like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And the, uh, we have a new sheriff in town, too. Uh, you know, the newly elected uh, sheriff. Mm -hmm. and, and so the timing on a new sheriff... Um, or a new captain for us is is still up in the air. We'll have to see. There's been a lot of shifting at the at the uh, downtown level, but we do have Lieutenant White, who yes, is acting. an RPV resident. He's acting, and he may wind up. I, my understanding is he may have a desire to to put his hat in the ring for that job. There is an interview process. Uh, the council and staff get to weigh in on that, but ultimately the decision is made at the sheriff's department. So we'll see. I don't know what the timing is on that. And of course, uh, all the contracts that he's weigh in on, on who all the, the next contracts that he's getting be. opportunity. Sure. Well, of course, uh, that was. Uh, we wish him. Um, we wish Captain Berger the best of luck. He in was his, awesome in his retirement and. Yeah. Um, and, of course, that was all at the January 15th meeting. So let's talk about that. that was the most recent meeting um, for the council, and you tackled a lot. You had a public hearing. You discussed um, a lot of what's happening with the preserve um, mm. and uh, activity there and parking issues at Del Cerro. So why don't you just give us sort of a, give us a highlights of what the council voted on during that meeting? Sure. Well, one of the, the first things, and it was a big thing, and it had to do with uh, accessory dwelling units, which, you know, so, which is a secondary uh, structure on somebody's lot. The state now mandates that, that cities allow residents to do that and build these uh, secondary units. Some people call them granny flats and what have you. But You call them ADUs, also ADUs, accessory de uh, dwelling unit? Correct. And, and we basically, we didn't have, our, our ordinance and our zoning code did not specifically address how that was going to work. Uh, the mandate was that we allow it, but we can still control what goes on there. So, you know, specifically, again, I made a few notes here that, you know, we require neighborhood compatibility whenever there's a second unit over 12 feet high. Uh, we had an issue with that recently. We clarified what the triggers are with respect to neighborhood, neighborhood com uh, compatibility for units over 16 feet high. Uh, there were some inconsistencies in the definitions and a few other little things. Um, but, you know, our number one goal is to maintain the aesthetics and the community feel and just don't don't have two story big boxes in someone's backyard. And, you know, it's 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 very important that we did this. And I'm glad staff jumped right on that. We dealt with it via an urgency ordinance, meaning it was that important that it got moved forward. Right. And of course, all this is coming about the whole discussion and debate about uh, what communities need to do to address homelessness, affordable housing and all that. So you did set up. An ad hoc committee, correct? So we'll have that to look into it more. With we did, Mayor actually. Pro Tem. Mayor Pro Tem uh, and so Councilman be, Alegria, yeah, they, not, they, they both addressed that issue, and I kind of goaded them into... And those are our newbies, the new <laughs> council members. Those are our members. newbies, yeah. and, and they got a lot of energy and a lot of great thoughts. And so they'll be looking into just solutions and how to handle what's going on Yeah, there. you know, it's interesting. We do have a, a, a slight homeless problem in RPV, not not like a lot of other cities, but, you know, it, it I have had commentary from a lot of residents that we're seeing a bit more in that. We need mm -hmm. to address that okay. in multiple ways. So you felt good about that urgency ordinance getting passed? I, did. I know that was one of your priorities. It was a big one, and that's going to get fine-tuned. And I actually, during the break for Captain Berenger, I had about 20 residents come out and really just enthusiastically thank me and the council for stepping forward and doing what we said we're going to do because they spoke at the meeting prior to that as a complaint. We told them we're going to address it, and we, in fact, did in very short order. Mm -hmm. So other, a couple other big things that came up had to do with um, issues at Del Cerro Park and the parking problems that we've been talking about for 
quite a number of years now in the community. Absolutely. And the council keeps trying to help the residents there and deal with that. So what is the solution now? A couple, couple different things. First of all, the, the parking situation, well, it, let's let's step back for a second. A lot of this has to do with usage. Right, and of the preserve and of Del Cerro. Of the preserve and specifically Del Cerro. That's the primary entrance to the preserve. You have the Burma Trail right there, Burma Road Trail. And everybody wants to park it there. So over the years, like you said, we've 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 actually implemented multiple fixes, uh, which have have gone over very very well. You know, some people, some of the people from out of town, don't necessarily like that we only allow parking on one side of the street. But from a safety perspective, very very important. We don't allow night parking anymore in there because people used to go into the preserve at night, which mm -hmm. is not allowed. And they used to go into Del Cerro Park and party and whatever else was going on there. But one of the big things we did was address the night hike issue. Right. There, were, there was some night hiking going on primarily by the Sierra Club. Um, and, and there was some concern on the part of residents, primarily the first row of homes right up against Burma Trail, right off of the Crenshaw Spur. And we came up with some rules. We just basically said, you have to apply for a permit. We want you done by nine o'clock. You can have this many per year. We really ratcheted it back quite mm -hmm. a bit. The, there was a policy, I think it was 2001, that the council at that time came up with, but it was time to revisit this and address the complaints of the residents, and I think we came up with a good solution there. So these revisions so. of the night hike policy for our residents that might have watched council meeting or watching right now, and they want to know, can I go out with my family on a night hike? What, what's the best way for them to... No, if that's allowed. Well, first of all, they can they can contact the Sierra Club if they want to participate with them, but they can also contact city staff because it's not just it's any nonprofit group, and the city will, in fact, if there's enough interest, they will lead night hikes. And if you have a a trained and certified hike leader, that in in fact in and of itself will allow them to enter the preserve. But you got to do it via permit is the primary thing, and you're limited to twenty. And you 20 individuals and you got to be out of there by nine o'clock okay so. and then another issue that came up in that general area had to do with um unauthorized use of rattlesnake trail area the trailhead what what happened there well rattlesnake trail the the trailhead was right next to the island view they their hoa has a parcel of property they have a tennis court and they have a big grass area and and there is a staircase there as you know that's a primary uh access point for the utility companies 275 feet Right down, it's probably one of the most challenging areas as far as trails go. And, uh, you know, people would start using that at 5 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. There'd be people there again late at night in this in this HOA property, and they'd be partying there, and there was trash and dogs, and you know what dogs do and all that good stuff. So there, there, was, there was an outcry for some sort of control there. And I have to compliment staff, did a great job. When this was brought up probably, I don't know, four or five months ago, it, it almost seemed untenable that it was what, what's going to be the solution. But now we have we have a gate going in at Burma Road to stop uh, unauthorized access and access after hours, which we're going to stop. You won't be able to get in, but you're able to exit. Same thing on the top of Rattlesnake Trail. Mm -hmm. The other thing we're doing is we're providing some fencing and we're splitting the cost with that HOA to ensure that that people don't trespass on that property. But the plan is great and and the. Uh, the, the uh, collaboration with staff and the HOA and the council was, was excellent, and everybody, I think, was extremely pleased by that. The other issue we had dealing with the preserve was parking at uh, on Park Place, mm -hmm. which is the road right next to Del Cerro Park, which is right next to the preserve, the primary entrance to the preserve. And, and you had a lot of traffic there. There's three residents on that street. The entire street is red striped, so there's no parking on the street. And what the main problem was is you had people coming into the parking lot, as you know, and, and there'd be a lot of traffic, especially on the weekends, and people would go in there and weren't able to come back out. And people would sit there and wait for someone to leave a parking spot. Mm -hmm. So what we did was and six months ago, we actually assigned recreational parking for those RPV residents that wanted to apply for a permit. They could have parked on Crenshaw, 10 spots very close to the entrance of the preserve. We've changed that now. We're going to allow the residents with those permits to park in the parking lot at Del Cerro. And we're also going to give some relief to those residents. We're allowing them resident permits. If they have guests, they have nowhere to park mm -hmm. unless it's in their driveway, which is really not fair. Uh, so hopefully with the signage there that says this is permit parking only, we'll cut down on that traffic and give them some relief. And we're also freeing up those 10 spots on Crenshaw. So. Yeah, it seems like you're getting there each time. We're getting, getting there. Getting better at we're it. We're getting there. And, and, well, and 
Lisa and I, I want to say they're not good problems. I mean, the preserve is such a beautiful resource oh, and a wonderful awesome. gift to the community to have. And it's just that balancing act of the residents that are here and every, you know, it's for everyone to share and use and enjoy. So absolutely. And, um, but, and everybody wants to be an RPV. They do. We're, we're a hotspot. We're a destination city, as they say now. Yeah. So, no, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful. I am, too. It's great. We love it. People come here and are just shocked every day. Well, I, one of the biggest things this council is addressing, and it's gone on for half a century, is what's going on with the Portuguese Ben landslide. True. Um, at your December 18th meeting, the council voted to award a, a you know, like a half a million dollar contract or so to Stephen Associates. Is that yeah, Daniel B. Stevens and Associates to design Correct. sort of a, a system that might help deal with it. Um, talk about that. I mean, we all we all know that what it's like driving over the bumpy road and being in that area. Yeah, but they used to call it the ski jump <laughs> and the roller coaster. We drive that all the time because we're on drive south. But so basically, what's happening with this this next step? Well, this again is was one of the goals that I first started out with before I ran for council was addressing Portuguese Bend, the landslide, et cetera. But I really want to take my hat off to Councilman Dieta. He has. Um, marshaled this thing and, and, and championed this particular issue uh, for years. And he really pressed it, and the council got on board. Um, Which I have to add, Councilman Dieter, founder of the city, he's been dealing, knowing about this since he first got elected, right? He so, did, absolutely. So my goodness. Going back many, many years. <laughs> but, and he's, he's an expert on the topic, and he's an engineer by nature, so, or by trade mm -hmm. in, his, in his previous life. But uh, he, he's a wealth of knowledge, and as we were talking about, I just love listening to Ken. He's, he's a great guy, and I hope I'm as sharp as he is uh, when I get to be that age. Um, but getting back to Portuguese Ben, we're trying to take a very measured approach. There was a lot of input uh, from, from a lot of people, especially those concern, uh, concerned with the preserve and, and with all the, the habitat and the animals, et cetera, and we get that. So the council decided, I think, appropriately to take a very measured approach uh, the biggest issue there is removing water, and I'm not going to get into the weeds here about all the issues of where the water comes from and all these things, but we're going to get a handle on it. The biggest thing is keeping the water out of the ground. So one of the first things we're going to do is um, deal with what they call hydro augers, which are horizontal drains, because we used to have dewatering wells, what they call them, and they used was, to drill them, and they'd get sheared off in a matter of weeks, and it was just a waste of money, and at you know, 50, 60, 75 grand a pop, it was horrible, but... The new design is the hydro augers, which go horizontally and are not as susceptible to snapping off. That's a big one. That's going to remove a lot of water. The other thing we're going to address, and this is where some of the debate is, um, deals with surface water and how we're going to do that. For example, there's a lot of water. If, if you really drive and look, the water butts up against PV Drive South. PV Drive South is, like Ken says, it's an earthen dam, and the water mm -hmm. would stop there. We need to ensure that that water passes Jeez. down, continues, and gets to the ocean. So those are the probably the biggest things and some other collection efforts on some of the canyon runoff and what have you. So anyway, these guys are experts at what they do. They've been very successful. This is the first phase and, and, and hopefully once they come back with their plan and with community input, and if it's approved by council, we can take some steps to slow it down. I don't, you know, yeah. the goal was to stop it. I don't think that that's really attainable, but if we can slow it down, some of the areas move nine feet a year. It's crazy. I know, crazy. that is a lot. I mean, we're a destination city with a world-famous uh, landslide. Hey, yeah, I told them, you know, if it takes long enough, we might be building a bridge, and we might name it the Ken Dieter Bridge there. There you knows? go. <laughs> well, so, so there's still a long way to go. But this Absolutely. particular council seems to be really pushing it for the first time in a while. I feel like that. We've been think, hearing about it for years. Well, you know, the problem was I'm not sure that there was an appetite to really try and attack it. I think some people wanted to keep it on the back burner. And there are there is a very large group that just says, leave it alone. We're fine. Just pay to pave the road. And that, whether whether good or not, is an option is just to keep paving the road. It costs mm -hmm. about, you know, anywhere from 600000 to a million dollars a year. Right. And, uh, you know, depending on how much this project costs when we get the... Uh, the, the cost of the solutions, we'll see. We may have to weigh that. Okay. Another uh, big project on the south side of the hills, Ladera Linda, the uh -huh. master the park there. It's been discussed for a while now. Right. Um, give us up, bring us up to speed. At December 18th meeting, the council voted to execute another more than about a half million dollar professional services agreement with Johnson Favaro. That's right. Uh, they're going to develop an architectural and engineering design for Ladera Linda Park, which yeah. will include the community center and all that. 
So Absolutely. What does the community need to know about where we're at with this project? Well, first project? of all, oh. everybody knows Ladera Linda. If you've been up there, was an old school, was around for you know, 25, 30 years, and has been a park for about the same, same amount of time now. So it was a school in the 60s. And it, and it really is, uh, it's in disrepair, and it's unsafe, and, and time to move on. Uh, we started, this is going back two, two plus years now, about getting some conceptual ideas uh, to, to basically redesign and build a new Ladera Linda Community Center and what that would entail. And there are so many moving parts of that. I'm not, again, going to get into all that explicit detail. But what started off as a conceptual project did get into a significant amount of detail, so much so that a lot in the community, when, when we signed this contract to get conceptual drawings, like, what are you doing? We have conceptual drawings. Well, no, that was supposed to be a master plan, and, and that was the roadmap for these conceptual drawings. But anyway, we're, we're, we're moving on. We've got a great architect. They're going to come back. We had, I don't, I don't even know how many um, um, meetings. community meetings. I, well, you were I, at many of them. I was at almost of every them. one of them. And, and there's been a lot of community input, a lot of people on you know, different sides of the fence, which is okay, and we take all that input. There's going to continue to be more. They mm -hmm. want that input. And I think... We're listening to the residents. You know, there's only one way in and one way out right. to Ladera Linda. And you've the, got the preserve trail there. You've got the soccer. There's a lot of th lots happening in that neighborhood. Well, I have to say, you know, we we, we actually uh, raised a stink on several of those things uh, going back a number of years. And I have to congratulate AYSO. They really stepped up and, and moved some of the games around. And we actually, the city at City Expense now has traffic management there right, on the weekends. So it's so, being managed. We'll see what happens. We are, we, we've got a lot, long way to go, uh, a lot more design. We've got a lot of input from that, specifically Dara Linda HOA. Mm -hmm. They're the ones most affected. Um, but, you know, we also have to think globally that this is a resource for the entire city. So I, I'm excited about it. That was one of the things I'd like to see done before I leave in the next 10 months is to have a final, final uh, uh, plan going forward. A groundbreaking well, I don't like know that. about that, but, <laughs> but, but at least if we have a, a, a ratified plan, that would be awesome in my opinion. Okay. Another plan involving a very big building could be the possibility of developing a civic center. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about having a new civic center here at the City Hall site for mm -hmm. a while. Um, and uh, that it would also maybe include emergency services that are needed on the south side of the hill. So all that. Um, what is going on? That's one of the goals for 2019 to sort of move that forward. There's a Civic Center Advisor com Advisory Committee there now. Is, there is a, a very robust committee with a, very, a lot of very knowledgeable people and experienced people from engineers to former city staff to, uh, you know, just very involved residents and have a lot to say there. The biggest thing there, Liz, and, and you and I have talked offline on this, is we really can't do anything right now. We are moving forward with, with that committee, and they're coming up with ideas and suggestions. And there was a lot of work done 10, 15 years ago. Maybe I think it was maybe even longer than maybe 17 in 01. There was plans drawn and, and all this good stuff. But the, the issue is there is we have deed restrictions, and the, the parcels up there are not congruent. We don't have one big – it looks like we do, but we don't. You, it's not one big square – flat piece of land. Some of it's Coast Guard, some of it's federal, some of it's restricted. And and it would be an error on our part to to move forward without getting those right. deed restrictions removed. We need to it'd be nice to get one big square plot of land to deal with. And we don't have that right now. So we've been working hard on that. And probably most residents don't even know that. We we actually hired a lobbyist two years ago and we had a plan going forward. Uh, Mayor Brooks at the time visited D.C. several times, and I visited with her once, and we went and talked to the, uh, uh, the congressman in charge of the committee for national parks, uh, the, the interior, and, and we're working to get that. So that's a big thing, but it's exciting. We're looking. We need to have the ability to potentially build a civic center, and a lot of people want it. Uh, but we also need uh, safety safety apparatus on the south side of the hill. That's been lacking. That was one of my big things when I ran on council. Right. It's huge because the response times are tough sometimes on the south side. And there's a lot happening here. We have Terranea, exactly. we have Trump, we have Golden Cove. There's, there's a lot. Things have changed, and we have a very small fire station there. We've, we've actually reached out to the fire department. They are very interested in putting a, a full-blown station with a paramedic unit mm -hmm. on the south side. The sheriff's interested in also building a unit. 
and they actually would co-locate those at their expense as long as we provided the land. So okay. it's exciting. I, I, I would relish the day that that happens. And you said you will be on council when that I happens. I won't right? be on council when it happens. But You'll be we, in Congress then. It, yeah. There you go. <laughs> or we'll something see. like yeah. that. Um, you know, one thing that the council focuses on is the quality of life for residents and how to improve the quality of life. And we could just start with like like infrastructure projects and the roads, but well, we have the best roads in the state, right? Best roads in the state, and I think our PV residents would agree to that. So what do you think, well, I mean, in terms of what is this council going to probably try to work on doing just to improve quality of life for the residents? You know, I, I think overall that that's always in the, uh, in the forefront of our minds. We want to maintain that semi-rural nature and ambiance of the city. And it has to do with a lot of little things. People forget probably three or four years ago, you know, we, we have a service that you can, if there's graffiti, for example, you can get an app, you can take a picture of it, it sends the coordinates to our vendor, that graffiti will be gone within 24 hours. That's how quickly we deal with that stuff. Uh, quality of life, you know, we've got a lot of young families, there's a turnover, a lot of the older folks are maybe moving out or selling their homes and, and what have you. And it's interesting because they had to reopen a bunch of schools because the, the, the kids came back. And the kids like parks, so we're dealing with our parks very seriously. We've got Hess Park, we're spending a lot of money redoing the entire turf at the mm -hmm. top of the park because that's where a lot of sports are played. Opened um, up a new dog park at the Eastview. Opened up a new dog park at Eastview. People enjoy that. We're doing the Ladera Linda scenario, so... Um, beautification projects. I mean, you look at the corridors now. Beautification projects everywhere. Right. Everywhere. And, and we may ratchet more of that where we get private involvement in some of our medians, so... Now, the city's, the city's doing well. The other thing you talk about, uh, the main arterials, one of the things that people may or may not notice is that we are going to be thinning out some of the non-native foliage, the acacia, and some of the other overgrowth because, as we talked about again offline, one of the, one of the things that I find significant pleasure when I drive home every day is I hit that sign that says, Welcome to RPV, you go around the bend, and you see the ocean open up, and it's just it's fantastic. And, and very awe-inspiring and it, it makes you feel like you're on vacation every day but you know there are certain areas where there's overgrowth especially around uh, PVIC and and uh, Pelican Cove there where some of this overgrowth is literally blocking the view so we're going to deal with that so these are the kind of quality of life issues I'm talking about one of the things that, that that's important to me and I think I might have mentioned it earlier is I, I'm looking for continuity there's going to be a change over here we've done a lot of hard work we, we actually had quite a bit of turnover with staff one of my themes is to impart not only on our two new council members, future council members, and generations forward what all has been done. I think we've embraced it. I know I've embraced it. I've had the luxury of knowing Ken Dida for you know a decade plus now, and you don't get that kind of knowledge. So that's a big thing for me. My other theme is, um, again, just just making everything that we've done so far stick. Running the city like a business, you know ensuring the semi-rural nature of our of our uh, entire city. Uh, those are my themes, and, and it's, you know, they may not be big bells and whistles. There are a few other new exciting things that may be coming up in the future, but uh, right. I'm looking to close out with a bang now. All so. right. And to continue also to encourage community involvement, I think the city prides itself on its volunteers. And what's the best way for residents, do you think, to get involved and also to reach out if they want to discuss issues in the community going well, on? Well, first of all, I'm glad you reminded me. We, we have... Um, interviews for current committee for the uh, planning commission and other committees we have 26 different residents stepping forward for these positions so we have a and i always say this we have probably one of the best most involved most educated communities i'll put them up against anywhere in any city uh, and the the level of volunteerism from helping clean a park or doing mm -hmm. a beach cleanup or what have you to to actually something a little more robust, which is, you know, serving on one of our committees and possibly serving on council. Um, you know, the, the residents can find out about that on our website. They can call the mayor. Mm -hmm. They can call staff. Um, but there are multiple opportunities for people to get involved, and people really do get involved. It is one of the things that makes this community so great. All right, and that's rpvca.gov. That is the website to go Absolutely. to. And the website looks fantastic. They do a great job. I'm, I'm, I'm tickled to death with our staff. Uh, Doug Wilmore does a great job. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been around. I'm, I'm surprised. This, you know, this is his fourth year now. It seems like yesterday. It seems yeah. like yesterday we were sitting doing these shows. I know. Five well, plus I'm years. glad we're back for round two. Anything we're going to wrap it up here you want to add? Um, you're going to be here monthly to bring all the residents up to speed and all the things you're doing and 
Residence. That's one of the things I'm uh, on my goals is to make sure, and one of the things I'm going to enjoy most <laughs> is coming back with you once a month. That'll it's be great. Fun. Well, we appreciate all you do in the support of RPV TV. Thank you, Mayor Jerry. Thank Jehovah. you so much. Great Liz. to have you here on RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. See you next time. Thanks for watching.